In today's video, we'll be talking about month in close and how you can get that down from where it is today. Let's say you're taking somewhere between 15 and 20 days to close the books to somewhere between five and 10 days to close the books and produce financial statements. And there's a famous line that I love from a movie by Alec Baldwin where he says, ABC of sales, always be closing. So ABC of sales is always be closing. And this is what it feels like to a lot of accountants is that you're always constantly closing the books. You're closing the books so that much that it seems like Groundhog Day every day, the entire month you're spending closing the month before. And this is what we're trying to avoid, right? This is the goal of this video is to highlight the mistakes that you're potentially doing that is causing this. And the tips I'm going to share today and the mistakes that I'm going to show you today are things that are based on my own experience as a controller, working for the last seven or eight years as a controller in New York City, before that an accounting manager, and before that an auditor where I had clients that were closing the books between five and 10 days. And I always wondered how are they doing it because I've seen many other companies struggle in getting the books closed in about 10 days. So without further ado, let's dive right in. I also wanted to announce to you guys that I started to work on my accounting masterclass that I'm going to release on my website in summer of 2022. And in that class, I'm going to be teaching you my experience as a controller and how to record transactions, how accounting works in the real world, how to do a month in close effectively, how to analyze financial statements. So when the class is ready in the summer of 2022, around August, I'm going to leave a link in this video and probably every other video that I'm going to make from that point forward. So go ahead and check maybe the description of this video in the future to see a link to that. Uh, class when it's ready but for right now you can also go ahead and check my website where I have a couple of awesome online courses on financial analysis and accounting job interviews go ahead and check that out all right first of all let me clarify what is the problem with taking too long and closing the books and records on a monthly basis the biggest problem is that you are providing old news right if we are now closing the month of March of 2022 and we are in April let's say we are around April 15 or April 20 now March becomes old news and guess what is the thing that everybody's focused on is the performance in April, right? So March becomes old news. If you've waited too long, now the stakeholders or the management is focused more on the month of April, right? And what's going on in April. So that's why you want to get the books closed for March in the first five or 10 days. That means you're providing the information timely for management to make some decisions on the business and not wait too long. So this is the biggest thing is that to understand that when you wait too long, you're at this point providing, providing old news to stakeholders. All right, now let's dive into the mistakes that I've seen a lot of people do in closing the books. The first one is that they're not using a checklist, an actual checklist of the things that they have to do. So the first thing is a checklist. And if you're looking for a checklist, I have a video, I'm gonna leave a link up here and maybe in the description below, and a checklist that you can create easily that can show who owns what activity during the month end and have a date and assign ownership so that you can get everybody on board with the month end close. So the first thing and very important is that I've seen people not using a checklist and a certain calendar dates in that checklist to show when everything is due to be completed. The second big mistake that I've seen people do is that they wait around, right? So I'm gonna write this down here as you wait around. And what I mean by that is that you're waiting around during the month to do the things that you're supposed to be doing for month and close. You wait until after the month ended to do it, right? Well, you could be doing it during the month. So what you should be doing to fix that is that you should look at the list of the checklist that we talked about in number one here. Look at that list and identify the things that you could be doing during the month and do it before the month ends, right? So as an example, payroll. If you're running payroll externally to your ERP software, then what you could be doing during the month is that you can book the payroll uh, journal entry by downloading the report from whatever payroll ADP, whatever you're using, summarizing it and booking the journal entry for payroll before month end. You don't have to wait until month end to do it, right? So identify the things from the checklist that you could be doing during the month and go ahead and give it a date that's going to be before the month ends so that when the month uh, end comes, you have less things to do on your checklist. The other mistake that I've seen people do is that they don't assign tasks to people. What I mean by that is that every single task on your checklist up here needs to have an ownership, someone who owns that task, right? If you just make a list of things without assigning who owns it, that's a problem, right? So you need to assign tasks to people. So I'm going to write this here as people. This is very important is that people need to own stuff in order for things to get done. If you leave it uh, up for grabs, things are not going to get done. So assign tasks to people. That's very important. 
The next big mistake is that you're not reconciling the balance sheet in time. And what I mean by that is that you're not going into the balance sheet accounts and reconciling one by one. So when you look at the balance sheet, you're going to see first cash. Mostly people reconcile cash. Cash is important to reconcile in order for you to get the books closed. But you're neglecting the rest of the balance sheet or maybe you are reconciling these accounts after the monthly close. But what I want you to do is you should reconcile these balance sheet accounts before you close the books. So maybe make it toward the end of the task on your checklist to reconcile the rest of the balance sheet accounts because that's how when you find mistakes. And guess what happens if you find these mistakes after you close the books? Now you've got a problem. Now you might be thinking about opening the books again and making some adjustments, right? So you need to be um, making the balance sheet reconciliations as part of your monthly close. So I'm gonna write this down here as balance sheet rex. You need to be doing that as part of your month and close checklist. The next mistake that I often see is that people are not making the task sequential on a checklist. So when you look at a checklist, this checklist here, which you can see an example in the description below, should be sequential if you have a codependency. As an example, if you look at a checklist that I provide as an example, right? On working day three, I have a task for recording all vendor invoices. And this is happening on working day three. Uh, then I have in working day number four, I have accrue expenses, right? And this is important. This is a sequence. In order for me to be able to accrue expenses, I need to have done step number three or working day three, record, record all vendor invoices, right? So after I record all vendor invoices, I can then maybe look at a list of open purchase orders and then I can determine what are the expenses that were incurred during the month that I haven't received an invoice for that I have to accrue on the books and records, right? So sequential, make it sequential. And to do that, just the first thing is to draft all the steps, right? And then identify code dependencies and then assign a working day number one, two, three, four, five, until you get to the point where you have a good working checklist for your month in close. So number five on my list is sequence. The next mistake that I see people do is that they're not making clear goals to their team on to what they have to do to improve the process. So for example, let's say you're taking about 15 days to close the books and your goal is to get to 10 days, right? So the mistake that I've seen people do is that they're not making these goals clear to the rest of their team. For example, a controller sitting down with the staff and saying, we're taking 15 days, we need to get to 10 days, and here are all the suggestions that I have to get to that point, right? And then you make it open for suggestions from other team members because everybody has probably ideas on how to get things done faster and more efficiently, right? So the mistake that I've seen people do is they're not making clear goals, right? So you need to have clear goals and you need to communicate these goals to your team to make sure everybody's on the same page. The next mistake that I see is you're not doing a hard close. So I'm gonna write here, hard close. What I mean by hard close is that you're going into the accounting software and you're tagging the period or marking it as closed, right? No more changes, right? This is very important because what I've seen sometimes, some controllers do, you don't do a hard close, someone comes along, books a journal entry, books a vendor bill, other transactions into the system that goes into the month that you just closed. Now all of, this, all of a sudden what you have in the ERP doesn't match with the uh, consolidated or the financial statements that you have in Excel. Now you got a problem and you got to investigate who booked that journal entry and for what reason. So you need to be doing a hard close. If you're closing the books in 10 days, in day 10 or day 11, you go ahead and close the books in the ERP software. No more changes. Communicate that to your team, make it part of the calendar or the close. You send out an email, the books are closed, no more changes. That's very important. Another big mistake that I see is that you're not automating enough. So you should be adding a level of automation to everything in the accounting process. So for example, if you're entering in journal entries in the ERP software manually, that's a problem. You should be uploading CSV files for journal entries, right? Because that's gonna cut down on time that's gonna be more accurate because it's coming from Excel versus you going in, you could be easily fat fingering a number in there or your staff could, right? Uh, so that's for journal entries. Employee expenses, instead of doing manual processing for employee expenses, you should be using a platform like Expensify or Abacus uh, that's gonna cut down on the cost and make the accounting booking much more streamlined, right? Uh, for vendor bills, instead of doing vendor bills and paying vendors via bank wires or ACH or checks, right? You should be using a software like build.com or Topolti or any of the other software that, that are available. So this is you looking holistically on all of the processes and trying to find systems that can cut down on the time needed. That's going to help you cut down on the time when it comes to month and close 
automation is key. All right, last but not least, the final mistake that I see people do is that they're not documenting. And what I mean by that is that you're documenting the knowledge within your team. So if you have someone, for example, who's in charge of booking the journal entry for stock option expense, right? This is someone who knows the process inside out. What happens if they leave the company, right? Now you're stuck, right? So what you need to do is that you should have your team document what they do in narrative. So this is Word documents. So just people document the steps that they do to get their work done not in every single aspect of the daily work, but the important things that if you, somebody leaves the company, you'll be stuck without having that person do this task. So documenting the knowledge is really important uh, and also helps you comes audit time because then you can give these narratives to the auditor as a narration on how everything is done around the company. All right, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you leave a like to this video and go ahead and download the month end close checklist that I have it in Excel in the description of this video and I'll see you in the next one.